Chicago already getting to use wall as heroes going for a big old open to Chicago playing a slightly different build as a Draenei not seeing that earth shield not seeing the ascendance Kira's taking quite a bit of damage even though he's got wings thunder with the sun gonna be a face restriction that's gonna be Kira shrinking out of it trying to go for as much soft healing as possible with the shield of vengeance Chicago got himself a bit of a heal stored up could heal him anytime he needs it and I'm just sitting at low health eventually that heals are gonna expire I think right has like little fireflies all around him quick stun with the second cell to fall Kira starting to max out damage Chicago could go for a heal and I think now they use the Night Fae heal. Just waited. Waited that mana. Just let that mana kind of pull up a little bit. And then when you need the healing, you'll be good to go. Kuros is going to have to fight Chicago as the Elemental Wolves or Elemental Raptors are back up and running with the Earth Elemental kind of tapping Kuros. It looks like he's smashing his fist, fist onto Kuros. It's really just tapping. It's, it's not really a lot of damage. It's basically almost healing him. It's so low of damage, it almost might as well be considered a heal at this point. I guess if you have like some kind of a passive, maybe like every time you take damage, you heal. Yeah, that guy ends up literally healing you. Kuros with a wing sprog is going to try to get some healing off. And Chicago tried to land a stun totem onto Kuros. But the paladin was pretty nimble on his feet. Was fairly quick. Stun onto Chicago. Got himself the hammer. But it's not getting the big procs. And Kuros is still a little bit behind on health. Even though Chicago is the one who's wolfing it out of there. Kuros is the one who is kind of lowish on health still for now. Chicago just trying to recuperate a little bit of mana. I think that's what Chicago is playing a more defensively. Just trying to get some mana back. And just trying to see if they might be able to live this. It's going to be worse up by Kuros. Still has wings roaring and blazing. Chicago is super low on health. Get hit with a stun. I think it might be done. Don't for Chicago. Not sitting a stun for long. I think because of the war stump earlier. And they are able to get himself a little bit of heal. Kuros is recovering a lot of health just now. So he's doing it okay literally using the term just to generate whatever holy power he can and chicago finally seeing the wings down for the paladin could go for a full side of ghost wolves might not be a bad idea chicago is only limited by mana that's the only reason why they even walking away from kuros ghost has joined the fight could be lots of procs especially if chicago can get himself full wind fury gonna be a stun with strange suspicion kuros straight inside of immediately try to go for a rebuke but chicago can't stay a little bit early so what has caused Chicago to lose all the mana besides the healing, which is obvious. Kuros doing big damage on Chicago's stone to follow. Chicago is going to try to give himself a bit of heal, but the Fate Streets are going to be a battle match stricken, I believe. They're trying to see if they can leg it out of there. That's a little bit of a close match between the two, Kuros and Chicago. Five minutes, almost getting to the six minute mark. Earth Elemental joining the fight. And Chicago is going to meet Kuros head on, but the wings... Oh no, try to send the life and ghost world. Can't they do it? Oh no. Oh man, Kuro's had the proc of wings there, and he has real wings coming up in just 20 more seconds. Our chorus is gonna be up next. Are they gonna shift their strategy? Looks like it's gonna be a stun as Blessing of Protection comes out for Kuro's. Is our chorus still gonna go with a necromantic bargain with the Crypt Fever dot from Apocalypse, or is he just gonna switch around and go for full army of the dead? Looks like he just wants to kind of keep Kuros at bay trying to make sure his pet does not get interrupted. Gonna be a missed interrupt by our Kuros though and his pet is gonna get feared to Guam. With our Kuros having to go for IBF, AMZ, AMS. Might have to call everything, especially the EMS. After our Kur Kuros got plenty of damage with those wings. Gonna be the looks like that Crypt Fever for our Kuros. But our Kuros, our Kuros actually kills the Mages of the Dead, I think with a bunch of Hammer procs. Or maybe just away the wake of ashes. Arcurus got himself grippy hand. Kuros got no big defenses, but only he's got healing. Hodge onto Arcurus does not sit that Hodge long at all. Stun onto Kuros. Can Arcurus do something about it? Yo, Kuros and Arcurus, those names are just so hard to just like intermingle between each other. Am I, is it just me? Am I the only one? Actually, Kuros, isn't it Kuros? Like extra long ooh. Kuros though, super low on health, does get himself the big tank and leg. Wait, can Arcurus can still capitalize on this? Gonna be a quick force of us. Kuros continue to generate himself holy power. Arcurus trying to see if he can bust in the defenses of Kuros, but it's gonna be shield of vengeance. Big hammers flying, hammer of justice. And Arcurus might be able to waddle out of there together with, if he has it, maybe with a uh, disadvantage. Looks like Kuros is just sitting next to him with a shield of vengeance, not letting the death go anywhere at all. Gonna be another crit fever on Kuros. Huh? How you up? Wait, how's Chicago up? Hmm? Oh, Chicago left. Okay, I was gonna say it for a second. Because look at Chicago just got off. <laughs> just look at Chicago was like, I rise. <laughs> hey, I didn't die. I'm back in action. <laughs> That's what I'm looking for a second. 
Hammer Justice onto Arcuras does get the pet stun onto the Paladin. As we head on the 8 minute mark, Arcuras does gain and does play Spell Warden. So as the holy damage comes out from Kuros, he is going to continuously get a shield to at least deal with some of the holy damage. But Wings might be able to blast their shield so easily. Arcuras trying to slow down Kuros while he has a full Wings proc. Hand of Freedom ready. Going to be that pet sacrifice for Arcuras. As he is going to go to stun onto Kuros just so he can give it a moment to resummon a new pet. Battle Master Trinket to give himself a little bit more health to work with. Going to be anti magic zone and Kuros just wants to stay out in the open. Wants to land a fear on the pet. But does get interrupted on Holy. Wait, you can actually go for a full uh, cast on the pet now if you wanted to. Crypt Fever back onto Kuros as long as he continues to hit himself with Word of Glory. That Crypt Fever doubt is going to continue to stay on him. So as Kuros continues healing himself, so actually pretty good for our Kuros. Going to be the I IBF in order to deal with the stun as the Hammer Justice comes down. Kuros getting a little bit more aggressive. No more healing from this guy. No more Mr. Nice Horan. And of course, I don't even know how you're doing this, but he is surviving narrowly both curious and Arcurus are both super low curious does have a bubble in case things really go bad a curse trying to get up a melee bubble comes out for the paladin slamming down the death knight with chip is trying to hang out by the pillar now that curious has no bubble only shield of is on eye for an eye chip should be able to take him down he's gonna get a grip on it it's out to curious with her most winter stone silence to fall the curious can't even heal himself how to go for an eye for an eye and that's going to be a big defensive paladin legendary as he gets himself 50 percent damage reduction for like a couple seconds for it i think with the shield of vengeance shield pillars trying to kind of wait out the shield uh, the shield of vengeance as he's waiting for pillar frost to come back in about uh 30 seconds or so heroes not getting interrupted just yet but also trying to juke chill pills hammer justice onto the death knight unless shield pills does he ibf this I don't think he needs to. I think he's going to be okay for now. He does need to worry about getting runic power and trying just to heal through the damage of Kuros. AMS up for all that holy damage. Is going to go for death pack. Try to grip Kuros in, but still holding on to an interrupt if he needs to. Try to go for shadow mill with the blind to Kuros. Chilpas wants to wait until he has full cooldowns available and maybe wants to chain those cooldowns until the next person after Kuros. You got Cubics, you got Faceless, you got Chili, you got Andrews. So you got a lot of people there. Kuros with a big AoE, trying to slam damage down into Chill Pills. IBF is up, stone onto Kuros and the trick inside of it. Kuros though must still be in trouble, Silence has nothing to work with. And Chill Pills just had to max out all that damage, dropping down Death Decay onto Cubix, trying to use the Death Strikes in order to maybe get himself a bit of healing, but Cubix not giving him an opportunity. A couple quick eviscerates taking him out and takes him out. Duke Nukem is going to be up next. Maybe he's waiting for iFox. Looks like Duke Nukem is going to be the one approaching the duels next. And iFox, I guess, is going to be behind at the back of that group. As Cubic's looking to get himself a bit of a better angle. Duke just blinking in, going for a bit of explosive damage. Kind of sticking to the name Duke Nukem, though. Big damage onto the mage, though, as he gets blasted. Full flagellation burst out of Cubic's. With shadow blades and everything just went absolutely ham on the mage trying to go for a little bit of explosive gotta be the ultra time in case duke gets in a bad spot cheap shot looks like this man doesn't have cauterize what did he get cauterize the first flagellation go wait a second what was that damage huh i don't understand I don't really understand, man. Man. On Forge. But Cubix is going to go for a bigger reset. He probably is caught. Did it really? With Flagellation Opener. That's nuts. Cubix is going to eat the traps in the world. All the traps in the world. But it's going to trick out of the Freezing Trap. Where Ifox is going to take advantage of the fact there's no more Trinket. Hits Cubix with a stun. Going to be that cheap shot into a disarm. As Cubix goes in for a reset. That is a... There is a poison coursing through his veins, but looks like the poison isn't going to get him out of stealth. I was thinking Chimeric might be able to actually pull him out of stealth as it is shuffles from one poison into the next, into the next. But I guess since the poison is just debuffs, it's not enough to like actually take Cubics out of stealth. Ifox sitting on top of a flare with some traps ready to go. Cubics wants to go for an opener, gonna be that camo. And Cubix is given an opportunity to at least get some cooldowns back. Trying to Phantom Knives Ifox if he can, but does dive back into stealth. Ifox starting to throw in a random flare. Doesn't quite get near Cubix. But now it's just a guessing game of where the other one could be. As we're in the 12 minute mark. Were both of the eyes used? Is that what happened? Did Ifox pick up both of the eyes that early? 
So if Yukumi sees a good opportunity, unless he walks around on top of Ifox, launches Mark, is going to try to go for Cheap Shot. Here's the pet instead as a Fain Death came out. It's still going to go for a big flagellation burst. Ultra Ifox, massive damage on Yukumi. What is this damage, Cheap Shots? This man just saw him for a second and just went it. He just sent it. Oh my goodness. Huh. That's some scary flagellation bursts that are subrogue. I feel like every subrogue is like Kyrian nowadays. I think people forget how good flagellation can be.